to the stream. Very excited today to open my first Brothers War Collector Booster. Um, got a couple of these in, and you know, I'm going to open them one by one. As usual, going to go through the cards, try to understand a little bit more about them from a draft perspective, um, and then you know, take some time. I uh, you know, create spreadsheets, kind of keep track of everything. I put them on eBay. So um, again, I create these streams just for people interested in that experience of kind of sitting with someone in a room while you open a booster pack. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how we'll go today. So let's open it up. boosters. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this set. I've seen a few openings. Um, you know, look through some of the checklists and have a basic understanding of what are in these packs. There's about four different sets that I need to pay attention to within Brothers War. There's the basic Brothers War BRO. There's the Brothers War Retro Artifacts, which are in all of these collector packs. There's the Transformers um, that come in each booster pack. So that will be interesting to, to see. And then we have our Commander stuff as well. So a lot of variation in these packs, which I think is pretty cool. These things have been really selling very well so far and seem to be a great product. So let's start with our first pack. All right, let's see, first card up. Let's see, let's see if we can get the zoom right today. The focus. So, Gixian Infiltrator. Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, plus a, put a plus one, plus one counter on Gixian Infiltrator. Two drop, two, one. And I guess this synergizes with a sacrifice mechanic in this set. Gnarled Root Paul Barrow. It's a sick drop with two greens. Trample, five, five. When it enters the battlefield, a target creature gets plus X, plus X the end of turn where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard so um, if you're cycling out a lot of different creatures um, this thing comes in and uh, can help buff something else that uh, is on the battlefield so that's why it's six mana for a five for five uh, five five um, thraxo demon okay so here's that sacrifice mechanic to two two for two a demon, sacrifice another creature or artifact, draw a card. Um, so basically you can put it down for two, and then in the next turn for three mana, you can sack something that's already on your board, like your one drop, and uh, draw a card. And again, that would um, synergize with Gixian Infiltrator. So this is the Rock Hunter um, with Reach. This is, let's see, a 3-1. So, good defender against flying if you're up against some type of white deck or something. Let's see if we can. Make sure that this looks good, yeah. Urza, Power Stone Prodigy, a three drop, one three with Vigilance, always cool. Um, for, if you tap one and tap the card, you get to draw a card and discard, so, you know, Get rid of something you don't like. Whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, create a tap power stone artifact, uh, pack tap power stone token, 
This ability triggers only once each turn. Um, so a power stone is an artifact with uh, that allows you to add colorless mana. And is used to cast more artifacts. So again, nice synergy with artifacts. Sarith Steel Seeker. Two drop for one, two. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, hold on one second. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card at your under your library. If it's a land card, you may reveal it and put it in your hand. If you don't put a card in your hand, you may put it into the graveyard. So this helps kind of buff that graveyard function we saw here, the Nar Rope Paul Bearer. Um, yeah. So there's our uh, there's our swamp. And I'll check the value of these uh, kind of foils. Here's our first rare, Fade from History. It's a four mana sorcery with two green. Each player who controls an artifact or enchantment creates a two-two green bear token, creature token, and you destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So if you're going up against, like we just saw in this blue card, this blue deck, you know, where you're gonna have a lot of different artifacts, um, a deck that may have a card like this, this kind of helps even the playing field, I guess, if you have. If they have powerful artifacts, but there is a kind of negative side to this and that to get a 2-2. Two -two. Here's our first, first mythic, Portal to Phyrexia, Phyrexia, sorry. When Portal to Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each creature sacks three creatures. At the beginning of your upkeep, so this is a nine drop. Oof. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard into the battlefield under your control. So any graveyard, it's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. So for nine mana, um, you basically clear the board for the most part. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to take a target, a target creature from any graveyard and put it under the battlefield under your control. So a really strong late, late game kind of win condition card. So we'll definitely be checking out Portal to Phyrexia in terms of value. Here is another mythic. Uh, this is a commander mythic Urza. Now this is, you know, Urza is one of the brothers in the Brothers War, so obviously uh, this should be of some value. Um, again, I don't play a lot of commanders, so it's hard for me to comment on the strength of this in a commander role, but should be interesting to check out. So now we're getting into our, um, what we call this retro frame artifacts, which are a big, big part of this set and are, are a what I think a very cool addition. Um, most of them are not valid in standard, so they're not draft kind of eligible, uh, but they are useful in uh, decks that are like modern or vintage, so older decks. I guess the, these are reprints of older cards and the um, cards can be used in whatever legality those uh, older cards were used in. So I'm um, just gonna kind of run through these because I don't know too much about them. If we had a mythic, I definitely talk about it. And you have these little, move this over here. You have these little um, blueprints um, for some of these artifacts. They're just a, a little more rare type of um, print of the artifact. But yeah, these these kind of retro frames are awesome. And in every one of these cards, you get a um, a mythic uh, um, transformer and. Again, only commander. These are only commander kind of cards. Uh, so we'll put that aside. I think the ones we're looking for, you'll kind of tell if we do find one. I think they're cracked glass and the cracked glass foils are very rare. So let's drop off our token and this is our last rare. Um, Razor Lash Trans Morgans. Can't block, it's a three one for two. Um, and when it, 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 for six mana, two blacks. So you can return this from your graveyard to the battlefield with a plus one plus one and this ability costs four less to activate as if, if an opponent controls four or more non-basic lands because your opponent has a bunch of you know dual lands or something like this um, then this is much easier to bring back and that may be a mechanic i'm not familiar with but let me go ahead and check any of this for value here again i'm still new to the values of these cards 
Obviously our bulk stuff is going to go in a pile. I'll take a look at everything else. So portal to pyrexia, even the non-foil, seems to be going for about 28.50. So that's a great pull. that in some plastic. Always exciting to kind of get through your first pack of a new set and kind of try to understand what, what the values are if you're obviously a collector like me, if you kind of trade this stuff. in the Brothers War Commander set. It's about a dollar seventy-five for this Orza Chief Architect. So, okay, the numbers are kind of hard to see here. Okay. No value on the artifacts. dollar on the rare. And that uh, fade from history isn't a great rare anyway. Let's see this one, this um extended art foil. check the transformer but I'm not confident of value on those yeah all right well this uh, portal to Perexia, like I said is a almost $29 card right now this is about two dollars so already uh, up ahead on this pack.
just the team bags, kind of like bigger bags, just to make sure I keep all the rares together and all the bulk stuff together, all the artifacts together. So I can kind of sell those all at once if I want to. All the transformer stuff. as pretty as the Dominaria set. The Dominaria set um, lands in the collector boosters have value just because they're very beautiful. Um, just talking about the last set, Dominaria United. And also Kamigawa had some great uh, lands, but these are you know, not as pretty. This is a uh, two drop mine worker. For two, it gives you a two one for two, no color. If you tap it, you get a life. If you control creatures named power plant worker and tower worker, you gain three life instead. So I guess this has synergy with other assembly workers. Um, so it could be an interesting little drop card. Um, just a nice two drop two one if you're looking for something like that. Halaji Chain Dancer. Um, so it's a four drop, two four. And again, I really love when the mana also represents the toughness of the card, especially in draft. Um, and if you tap for two, it gains double strike until the end of turn, which is really strong. So this is a great common here. Uh, one drop Clay Revenant, no color. It's a golem. Um, and it enters the battlefield tapped. So it's a one, two for one, comes in tapped, um, and it can also come back uh, from your graveyard to your hand and for three. It seems that it can do that uh, um, uh, indefinitely because it doesn't exile the next time. You know, So if it dies, goes to the graveyard, you bring it back. A lot of times it will exile if it dies again, but in this situation, um, it's it just can continue to come back. So yeah, it's a very flexible one drop. I like that a lot, and it's an artifact. So here's one of our uh, Rus here's one of our uh, prototype cards. This is a 10 drop for 10, but can be put down for five, two, um, two green and three uh, generic. Um, and, and it's a three five if you do that. Uh, and it also has reach and trample. So uh, again, if you if you have a lot of mana to tap, obviously this thing comes with a 10 10 reach and trample, but 10 mana is a lot. I would commonly put this in a five drop slot, um, a green in a green deck. And three five is just a really great kind of card at, at five mana, with especially with reach and trample. So here is the Argivian Argivian Avenger. Um, so it's a six drop that gives you five five. Um, and if you tap one until the end of turn, uh, it loses one one, and it gains uh, a choice of flying, vigilance, death touch, or haste. This is a super powerful card. Oh man, um, it can fly. It can have vigilance. I mean, just really, really powerful. Very flexible card. Again, no color. So here's our uh, junkyard genius. It's a uh, black red three drop. So it takes one black, one red, and one generic. Black red three drop for two. And when it enters the battlefield, it creates a tap power stone token. Again, those power stone tokens tap for uh, generic mana that can only cast artifact spells. Um, and if you tap again another three, you can sack another creature or artifact. And all the creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain menace and haste. So, yeah. Um, 
that's pretty good. There's our land. So here's our first rare, Mechanized Warfare. It's an enchantment for three, two red. If a red or artifact source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. Um, so this is a nice boost um, in a red deck. And it doesn't have, it's not very conditional. Uh, so there's one of our rares. Here's Fateful Handoff. Draw cards. It's a four drop with one black. Draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature you control. This is sorcery. An opponent gains control of that permanent. Okay, interesting. Again, conditional, so I'm not sure of the value on this. Then here's another Commander Rare. We'll talk about that one later. So here's our foil artifact, Ivory Tower. It's the blueprint version. So I'll check that one out. Foundry Inspector. Sculpting Steel is a rare. And this comes in as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. So very strong. Here's a Sound Wave, our Transformer. And our last card here is a rare artifact. Um, it looks like a blueprint, Lodestone Golem. Artifact creature, yeah. Um, pretty cool looking, if you ask me. <laughs> Progress update, the problem of the slag heap blocking the in entrance seems to have solved itself. <laughs> uh, I guess that's the, loads the uh, Lodestone Golem. Um, so we'll check that one too. Faithful Handoff does not seem to be a very popular card. So not a lot from that pack. I'm going to uh, take a look at that commander card, but uh, not a lot from that pack so far.
not uh, not a very lucrative pack there. Only one car that came out of that one, Lodestone Gola, worth about two dollars. But again, still about even because of that portal, Phyrexian portal, the uh, portal to Phyrexia. drop gives you two three um, for one you can sack an artifact and gets plus one plus one until the end of turn and deals one damage to each opponent pretty good three drop so this is a uh, overwhelming remorse this is a black five drop uh, it's an instant this spell costs one last less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard so again this is kind of like that sacrifice creature type mechanic you get to exile a creature planeswalker so um, uh, this can be very powerful uh, again usually you're going to see four mana to put something to, to remove something off the board um, but if you've a few creatures have died already you've sacked a few of them then this can be over over uh, overpowered so here's another instant it's a blue five mana instant and uh, you get to target a non-land permanent uh, target non-land permanent owner puts it on top or bottom of their library. So you can take a permanent and the owner chooses where to put it on their library and you get to scry after that. Don't love that card. The Phalanx Vanguard, a white 2 drop, it's a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance and when an artifact enters the battlefield it gets plus 1. Yeah, so basic card but uh, you know a really strong two drop, two two with vigilance for two, and when an artifact comes down, it gets plus one. So pretty cool. Here's another one of those um, prototype cards. It's an eight mana card. It's a four five with flying, um, and it lets you scry X where X is its power. So if it comes in as a four five. Uh, you get to scry four, and the prototype comes down as a four drop with two three. So as the scry mechanic, hmm, interesting because it has no color, but uh, it'd be questionable to take it in draft. Might might have some some synergy that I'm not aware of. Um, so here's another uncommon mask of the Jade Crafter. This is a two drop, no color, and uh, for an X amount of mana, and you tap this artifact. Um, this will create an excess colorless golem artifact creature token. Uh, and you activate it as sorcery, so you acti activate it on your turn. Um, so yeah, uh, as much mana as you can tap, this will give you a golem that you can use uh, as a creature. So this is, I really like this artifact. Um, and then on earth, this is a mechanic that allows you to return this card from the graveyard to the battlefield um, and exile at the beginning of the next end step or if it should leave the battlefield. Okay, so you basically get to bring this back for one turn for three cost. Okay, so a lot of flexibility there on that artifact. And this is just a beautiful card. Like the art is gorgeous on this. There's our land and here's our first rare. Yeah. Kayla's Command. Sorcery. So this is a three drop white. You choose two. You can create a two two colorless contract artifact. So you can create a creature, a two two. Put a one one counter on a creature you control and it gains double strike. You can get a planes card or you can gain two life. So um, again, I get why this is rare. It's a very powerful sorcery. It gives you a lot of flexibility based on where your board state is, where you are in the game. Um, so great card for white. Uh, so here's another sorcery for red. This is Brothers uh, Brotherhood's End. Um, this is a three drop, a red three drop, and this is a nice uh, borderless card. Um, so you can, so it allows you to choose one as a sorcery. Brotherhood End deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker, which is a lot and very strong for three mana, and allows you to destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less. So, um, wow. Uh, a really powerful card. 
really like this spell. This thing uh, can, can change the game. Urza's Workshop, this is a land, a commander land. Now we're into our the artifact part of this. So we have Self-Assembly, we have Foundry Inspector, and our rare is Cloud Key with the, um, what do we call that? The blueprint format. Our um, transformer is Jetfire. And our rare is a very beautiful Legion to Ashes. This is a rare, but it's also an extended foil, extended art foil rare with a black and white, uh, black, white, three drop. So black, white, and one generic and you get to exile a target non-land permanent and con opponent controls and all tokens that component controls that player controls with the same name as that permanent. Um, so this must be some type of mechanic I'm not entirely familiar with, um, but again, for three mana exiling, exiling something um, and then some other stuff that just happened to have the same name seems powerful to me. Okay. So let me check on this one. Let me check on a few of them. Check our rare artifact, check our Legion Dashes, Kayla's Command, and this Urza's Workshop. So Urza's Workshop actually goes for about $2.30, so we'll see that up. I think in this um, in this set, there's some really good commander lands that uh, may have value. Let's add this back in. value on Kayla's command. Although I think it's a very good card. Let's see this 356. Legion to Ashes foil is over four dollars, so very good. And again, another dollar thirty five on the cloud key. So, total value so far, market value of the cards we've opened is around forty one dollars. We've been through three packs. <coughs> so 
So um, the cost of those packs was around $50. Total value of the cards around 40, so about even so far with everything considered because the, uh, you know, the bulk rares and the bulk transformers and the bulk artifacts all have, all have value. Pack number four. So this is Dredging Claw. So this is um, a two drop artifact, a crypt creature. It can be equipped. So uh, it equips for one black and one generic, and the equipped creature gets plus one plus zero and has menace, which is very powerful at the beginning of the game. Um, and uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard, you may attach Dredging Claw to it. So uh, very flexible, especially in a black deck, would be great uh, to drop in, in the draft if you have that type of like return character from graveyard mechanic. I'm just going to grab a sip of water. So sibling rivalry, you gain control of a targeted artifact or creature until the end of turn, and it untaps and it gains haste. Uh, so this is a four drop sor sorcery, and you create a, a, a power stone, so something that can add generic mana. To bring in more artifacts and you gain control of whatever you want so interesting in a red deck epic confrontation so this is a two drop with green uh, one green one generic it's sorcery target creature you control gets plus one plus two until the end of turn so a very green like mechanic of pumping a creature uh, it fights target creature you don't control so each deals damage equal to its power to the other. Um, so this can allow you to use one of your creatures to maybe get rid of something on the board that's bothering you. Um, Carry on Locust. It's a three drop. Really cool art there. It's brutal. Um, it's a three drop black. One black, two generic, flying two one. And when it enters the battlefield, you exile a target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it was a creature card, that player loses one life. Uh, so has some extra value in certain circumstances. A flyer for three is interesting, but its power and toughness is a little low. So here's another sorcery. Here's our uncommon voluntary cooldown. It's a four drop blue, one blue, three generic. Um, you tap up to the two target artifacts and or creatures and you put two stun counters on them. Um, so it basically takes out something for around three turns or two things for three turns. Very blue like spell. Here's our um, human artificer. It's a battery bearer. It's a blue green two. So it's a four drop blue green. Um, it adds uh, everything to your creatures. You basically can't tap any creature to add colorless, colorless mana to cast artifact um, spells. And whenever you cast an artifact spell with mana six or greater, you draw a card. So if you, again, great synergy with artifacts seems to be a pretty common theme um, in blue and green. So yeah, good card if you have that set up. So here's our first rare. Blast Zone. Blast Zone enters the battlefield with the charge counter on it. It's a land. If you tap it, it can add colorless. If you tap it with other mana, you can put more charge counters on Blast Zone. And if you tap three and sack it, you can destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of charge counters on Blast Zone. Um, so a really cool uh, land here with a lot of different cap with the, the removal capabilities and it does tap with colorless mana so this probably has value because of its flexibility and we have a mythic a legendary creature Myrel, Shield of Argive 
legendary creature human soldier it's a four drop white she is very um, very beautiful great art um, during your turn your opponent acti uh, your opponent can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts creatures or enchantments uh, so that's very powerful um, and then whenever uh, this creature attacks you create a uh, a number of colorless soldier artifact creature tokens where X is the number of soldiers you control. So in a white soldier deck, this thing uh, is basically a win condition, uh, without a doubt. So I'm gonna check that. I really like that card. Unfortunately, we didn't get in the foil, but uh, I think the non-foil is just as good. Root Path Purifier. This is a uh, Mythic Commander card. I'm gonna check on this. Then we get into our artifacts. We have the Spring Leaf Drum, the Swift Foot Boots with the uh, blueprint, Here's our first mythic. This is really cool with this, um, you know, mythics with this uh, kind of legacy or retro art. Sundering Titan. It's a 710 for 8. Um, and it can destroy lands. Uh, so, really interested to see the value on this. Here's our first hollow uh, transformer, RC, the sharpshooter. And we have another, this is a hollow mythic, mesmeric, mesmeric orb, a two drop artifact. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanence controller mills a card. Wow. And mill is a mechanic that may, makes, makes, makes you uh, remove cards from your, uh, your library. So let's check. Uh, kind of a lot of these, a lot of interesting cards to check for value. First, I have 258 and 305. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, no value on the blast side. So Myrel is going for $16 in her no, non hollow format. So let's get her protected as soon as we can. create some space I'll bring her back let's look at these two really cool artifacts so the mesmeric Orb, Mesmeric Orb is So far, pack four is shaping up to be really strong. So let's check out our Sundering Titan. Number 57. Ah, no, no value on that.
Take new value on the hollow transformer. Good path purifier. Let's see what this looks like. So the root path purifier non hollow has a value of over fifteen dollars. Now again my knowledge of commander is limited. So I'm I'm definitely surprised, but happily surprised. So those are the big winners from today from this pack. So after that pack, our card value is up to $80, uh, with Myrel being the, the star of the show on that pack, and our uh, cost basis is around $70, so up $10 just on the, 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 the big hitters, as we call them, and uh, you know that's not even counting all the bulk. I think for brevity, I'll probably get through half the box, half the box today, and maybe do the other half tomorrow night, depending. So this is the Dwarven Forge Chanter. It's a two-drop red, uh, one three, so three toughness. Again, really like getting three toughness for paying two mana. Um, so it has a ward that the opponent needs to pay two life to cast a spell on it, which is cool. And it has prowess, so whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature, so basically when you cast a spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn. So I, again, I really like these commons. I think they're very powerful. If you drop that down on two, I mean, you're already ahead of the game. Survivor of Corliss, so this is a one drop, a one, one with first strike, so basically it can kill any Thing with one toughness without taking a hit and it can come back it can oh um sorry it can be exiled from the graveyard so if it's dead it can be exiled and get to scry with it in from the graveyard for two mana so again nice tr nice one drop there i always like to have a one drop with first strike because it neutralizes any two one two drop and still can stay on the board energy refractor a two drop artifact when Energy Refractor enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um, and if you tap two, you add one mana of any color. So um, this thing can basically take two lands and make them uh, into one of any color, which is obviously very flexible. Having an artifact down in this set gives you a lot of potential to mix with other cards. And it allows you card draw for two. So yeah, I really like that card. This is Taunus' Tinkering. It's an instant four drop green. So one green, three generic. Put two plus one plus one counters on target artifact, creature or land you control. Untapped that permanent. If it isn't a creature, it becomes a zero zero creature in addition to its other types. Okay, so you can make things a creature. Obliterating 
Folk. This is Sorcery from Red. It's a uh, two drop. Obliterating Bolt deals four damage to target creature, Planeswalker. If that creature, the Planeswalker, would die this turn, exile instead. So um, a two drop, a two mana card that does four damage and exiles it. Uh, I guess why that's, that's why they call it Obliterating Bolt. Um, I really like good, good red cards. Hero of the Dunes. So this, I'm trying to look at this a little more closely. It is a bit kind of abstract or, I guess, blurry, the art within it. Um, so this is a black-white five drop. So black-white and then five, uh, three generic. It's a three-two. And when it enters the battlefield, you return a artifact or creature card with mana value three or less to the battlefield. So that's the value of it, is bringing something back with three mana. And... Um, Creatures you control with mana value through, let's get plus one. Uh, so yeah, great card for a white black deck. Here is our first rare. This is Battlefield Forge. It can add, uh, it's a dual land with the one damage to you. It can also add a non-color um, non uh, generic for nothing. Here's our another rare. This is our extended art Harbin Vanguard Aviator. This is a two drop, a white blue two drop. It has flying, and when you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain flying. So if you have one of those soldier decks, and I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, this probably goes well with my rel in a draft. So you're just creating creatures and having something like this coming in three, two flyer for two. It's, it's very powerful. So the Hexavis, I'm gonna check out. This is a commander card um, and can put counters on other creatures. Onto our artifacts, we have Pristine Talisman, Chromatic Star. Here's a Mythic. This is a Mythic um, uh, Blueprint. Uh, artifact creature, Angel, Platinum Angel. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win. Very cool. Here's Jetfire. This is Jetfire Hollow. And we have a Hollow Black Blade Reforged. This is a rare Hollow Black Blade, Black Blade Reforged Hollow Rare. So we'll check a few of these out. Again, assuming that that Transformer card doesn't have a whole lot here, but we're uh, going to check anyway. has no value. Not that it has no value, it just has very little. So, let's see, Harbin. On to the artifacts. Platinum Angel is three dollars. worth two dollars on that
this jet fryer is just about the dollar, but um, probably just gonna keep it within the bulk uh, transformer cards. And then let's see, Hexapus. value of the card so far about $86 and the cost about 87 so you know drawing a little even maybe just a few dollars up but um, yeah still would be happy with that some really cool cards so this is going to be the last pack and then we're going to call it an evening Archaeologist. A two drop, a zero, three. When the archaeologist enters the battlefield, you mill three cards. And you may put a non creature, non land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, you can put a plus one, plus one on Falaji uh, Archaeologist. Um, so, milling, as it says, you put the top card of your library into your graveyard. So, um, again, this is really strong synergizing with the artifacts that uh, blue seems to synergize very well with in this deck um, and is flexible um, because if you don't find anything in those milled cards this becomes a one four for two which is really overpowered actually wasteful harvest so this is an, a, a three drop a, a green three drop one green two generic instant mill five cards you may put a permanent card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. Um, so yeah, uh, th this is a very flexible three drop uh, instant to get something and the top five cards of your deck into your hand. Ashnod's Intervention. Uh, this is a one drop black instant until end of turn target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains when this creature dies or is put into exile from the battlefield return it to its owner's hand so um yeah anything that gets pumped and then comes back into the owner's hand if it dies that turn is uh is a great instant especially for for one mana so i would be keeping this if i drafted it so here's an artifact creature uh, the swift gear drake and really cool art on that the flaming kind of talons on it um, So this swift gear drake artifact creature drake. It's five drop two four with flying in haste um, And when it enters the battlefield you can put up to one target card from a graveyard uh, on the bottom Target card and then put up to one target from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. So you can basically um Kind of remove a graveyard card from play which could have value in certain circumstances the fall of crew it's a six mana red sorcery requiring two reds four generic this sorcery you choose a target opponent and you destroy a target land that that player controls um, the fall of crew deals three damage to that player and one damage to each creature they control uh, so for six mana to destroy a land, give three damage to a player and one damage to a creature they control. I don't know about that, especially as a sorcery. Um, so Arbalest Engineers, these are a green, uh, this is a three drop, a two, two, three drop, green, red, one generic. When Arbalest Engineers enter the battlefield, choose one. Uh, they deal one damage to a target. You can put a 1-1 one, one counter on a target and it gains trample and haste until end of turn, or it can create a pa tapped power stone token. So for three mana plus um, basically one of those conditional things you can choose from, I like this card. All of these kind of uh, dual color creature human artificers which seem to be common in this deck on the uncommon rarity um, are, are, are really good, really good in draft. So there's our mountain.
our first rare is Gixian Puppeteer. So this is a Phyrexian Warlock. It's a four drop. One black, three generic. Gives you four, three. And when you draw your second card, whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Um, and when it dies, return another target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this can bring back something that's dead. If you have card draw in your black deck, uh, it accelerates your opponent's death um, and just all in all seems to be a really flexible card. So yeah, good rare. Good rare for black if you come across it and you're running a black deck. Fauna Shaman, another rare. This is an elf, elf shaman. You discard, uh, it's a two drop, a two, two, two drop, so that's good. Um, and for a uh, one green and you can tap it, you discard a creature card and you can search your library for a creature card, which again is really, really strong. You can get rid of that creature you don't want and bring one you do want and shuffle. Uh, OP. So we have Machine God's Effigy. This is a artifact, a commander artifact. Rare. And we're into our, uh, our artifacts now. A core wellspring. This is our uncommon. Bone saw, another uncommon. We have a rare form of amethyst. This is a, um, a blueprint card. Uh, another Megatron, which I do think is in some demand, even if it's just a basic Megatron. And here is Urza, the Prince of Krug. Now this is also a rare, but this is a beautiful, full art, extended art, hollow. This card, if it doesn't have a lot of value, I'm keeping it. Uh, I might just keep it anyway. Um, really, really well done. Uh, this is a four drop. It gives you two, three. It's a blue white. Um, artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. There's a ton of artifact creatures in this deck, and artifact creatures get, that get created along the way. Again, Urza is one of the brothers in the war, so obviously this is going to be a strong card. Uh, and for six mana, you can create a token that's a copy of a target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 soldier in addition to its other type. So it can basically take a token, uh, sorry, take an artifact that may have some very powerful attributes to it and actually make it a soldier so you can attack with it or tap it for its artifact powers or something like this. So um, very cool, very cool card. Interested to see if this has value. Um, these six seem to be the, the, the stars of this pack, and we'll see what comes out of it. So the Fauna Shaman's about uh, $2.75. Let's see that out. This Orza Prince of Krug has a value of around three dollars, but um, I don't think I'm gonna sell it because it is one of the more stunning cards in the set, I would say. And 
I really appreciate the art of these cards kind of more than anything. Just the design, the art. The Thorn of Amethyst is a little over three dollars. This, uh, this Megatron, again, they all have uh, other sides to them. This Megatron is worth, uh, it's the most exp one of the more expensive kind of basic Transformers. It's about uh, $2.30. I'll check that commander. Nothing on the Machine God Effigy. All right, so that concludes half of the box. Again, I do these run these things much slower than, than other casters because I want to talk about the cards. I want to talk about the art, especially from a draft perspective because I do play draft a lot. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is, uh, so basically to recap, um, you know, those six cards, those six packs that I opened, they had a cost of around $104, and the value of the cards I opened was around 94 Now, you'd say, okay, well, you're down 10 plus whatever selling fees, but um, of course I have all of the bulk, the bulk Transformers, the bulk Rares, the bulk um, uh, Artifacts, Retro Artifacts, uh, so... There could be an even, it's probably around even, I'd say right now. But uh, I have another six packs to go and we'll see what we get. So uh, thanks everyone for joining me. Um, if you're watching this live or uh, watching this recorded and everything you saw today can be will be on eBay probably by tomorrow. So if you wanna buy something, if you saw something I opened, they all go on eBay um, at market value plus whatever, you know, shipping fees. You know, I, I charge free shipping, but plus shipping fees and kind of just, you know, a few cents for the, for the, for other supplies I'm using. So, um, you know, if you want to get the best price on a card, check out my auctions and yeah, everyone have